Okay, 3.1 higher order derivatives. The first derivative of a function gives the rate of change of the function at a given point, i.e. the slope of a tangent. Now, the second derivative is the derivative of the derivative gives the rate of change of the slopes of the tangent, also known as acceleration. So in the first part we have velocity, the second part we have acceleration. Now knowing that, looking at the bottom, you'll see that you have some notation for second derivative. f double prime of x, y double prime, d2y over dx squared, which means a second derivative, and d2 f at x, which means a second derivative of f at x. So this is different notation which imply the second derivative. Now, in example one, you're asked to determine the second derivative. So we're looking at a and b here. And what does that entail us? Well, for a, the second derivative, well, you have to do the first derivative before you do the second one. So the first derivative is going to be 9x squared. You take the second derivative by doing the derivative of the first derivative, which is 18x. All right, part b. Let's do this. Let's do the first derivative of f at x, and that will give us 4x cubed plus 6x minus 8. Now we're going to do the second derivative, and that means that the answer is going to be 12x squared plus 6. Now. The application of the first derivative, as I mentioned earlier, is the velocity, how fast an object is moving, and the direction of the object. Application of the second derivative is the acceleration, which implies the rate of change of the velocity with respect to time. Now, again, the velocity is the first derivative of the position function, and the app and the second sorry and acceleration is the derivative of the velocity or the second derivative of the position function all right let's move forward example number 2 if omar drops his lunch from the school roof the height of his lunch in meters after t seconds is given by h equals 22.5 minus 4.9 t squared you're asked to find the velocity of the lunch bag after two seconds. So what is the question giving us? The question is giving us the height after so many seconds, so the position at where it is. We need to find the velocity of the lunch at two seconds, which means that we need to find the derivative of this position function and then plug in t for two to find the velocity at two seconds. So find the derivative. Once we find the derivative, sub t equals 2 into the velocity equation, and you end up with that the velocity of the lunch bag is 19.6 meters per second. You'll notice that that negative disappeared. The reason why it disappeared is you have to write it in particular with information. So the negative implies it's moving in a downwards motion because we're talking about height. So the velocity is 19.6 meters per second down. Make sure that you take that negative out and describe the direction it's moving in. All right. Part B, when does Omar's lunch bag hit the ground? Well, Omar's lunch bag hits the ground when the velocity is equal to what? Well, we're going to find out. When the height is equal to zero is going to be the time at which it hits the ground. So the height is equal to zero. It has nothing to do with the velocity here. We're looking at, at when the height is equal to zero. So therefore, we solve for t with, when h is equal to zero. And we find out that when we move things over to the other side, so you see the negative 4.9t squared moved over, you have 4.9t squared equals 22.5 divided by 4.9. Take the square root, plus or minus, and when you do that, you get t equals 2.1429. What does that mean? Well, 
The other answer will be a negative answer, and we're talking about time here, folks. So we won't have a negative time value. It's in, For our purposes in this question, the time cannot be negative. Therefore, Omar hits lunch hits the ground after 2.1429 seconds. Now, some of you are going, why can't we round it? If it doesn't say how many decimal places to round it, you always round to four. It is the closest or more accurate question, especially when we hit questions that involve trigonometry. All right, question part C. State the velocity of the lunch bag when it hits the ground. So sub t equals 2.1429. So basically, we take what we got in part B and plug that into the velocity equation to find what velocity at which the velocity at which the lunch bag hits the ground. So we take the velocity equation, we plug the t equals 2.1429 or the exact value if you want. Remember that the exact value from the previous question is actually this. So you can plug in this or plug in this, but folks if you plug in this exactly, funny enough, you end up with an exact value. So the velocity is 21, point meters, 21 meters per second downwards when it hits the ground. Interesting. All right, let's move on to the next one. Example number three. Omar is trying to get Kathleen's lunch, and he is chasing her moving in a straight line. The equation of his position, given in meters, is s at t is equal to t cubed minus 15t squared plus 48t where t is the time in seconds. When is Omar stopped? So now Omar, since he's lost his lunch, is looking for, is trying to get Kathleen's lunch. So when is Omar stopped? So basically what we're looking for here is when at any instant moment at which he stops. So what would that mean? Well, that would mean that the velocity would equal zero. At any moment that a person stops, they that you set the velocity equal to zero. So we ch find the velocity of this equation, which is 3t squared minus 30t plus 48. Where that came from was the first derivative. We have to find the first derivative, which is the velocity, set it equal to zero. Common factor, factor the equation. Lucky for us, it's factorable. So we find out that Omar stops at two points, at two seconds and at eight seconds. Those are the two times at which he stops. All right, part B. What is Omar's position when he is stopped? So we need to know what position he's in when he's stopped. So we find sub t equals 2 and t equals 8 into the equation. So s at 2 and s at 8. And we find out that s at 2 he's at 44 meters, s at 8 he's at negative 64 meters. Now a lot of you are going, well how can you be at a negative 64? Remember that this is a position function. So in terms of position, he's if we think of it as left and right, he would be to the right for this question and to the left of his original position in this question. So really, he has traveled those distances. If you're thinking about an x and a y axis, he's think of it as forwards and backwards. He's moved 64 meters below from where he started versus 44 meters above for, from where he started. So it's important to understand that the position function can actually have a negative value. It's actually implying that he's in the opposite direction from where he started. So if we, we call right positive, then left would be negative. So one more time, if right was positive, okay, this would mean he moved 44 meters to the right, and this would mean he moved 64 meters to the left, if you think on the, on the x-axis. All right, so he is 44 meters away, or forwards, at 2 seconds, and 64 meters away which is backwards at 8 seconds. Now some use forwards and backwards. I believe your textbook says right and then left. So the idea in terms of uh, in front or behind uh, is another way to look at it. All right, next part. C, when is Omar moving in a positive direction and when is he moving in a negative direction? What do we do here? Well, folks, 
We know that at t equals 2 and t equals 8, there is a stopping motion. So the idea is that there's a change that happens at those points. So we need to find out the time from 0 to 2 and the time and what's going on from 2 to 8 and what's going on from 8 to infinity. So we need to know what's going on. How is Omar moving in those values? From 0 to 2, the velocity, for example, at 1. When we know the velocity equation is the factored form, we know the velocity at 1 is going to be greater than 0 because if I plug in 1 here, I get positive, negative, negative. So positive, negative, negative gives me a positive value. So this will be positive. From 2 to 8, I pick a value, say let's say 3. I plug it in and I get negative, positive, positive. So positive, negative, positive. And that will give us a negative value. So V at 5, for example, is less than 0. Then 8 to infinity, I plug in a number such as V at 10. Well, 10 will give us positive, positive, positive. All of that will give us a positive value. So therefore, Omar is moving forwards from 0 to 2 seconds and when it greater than 8 seconds and backwards from 2 to 8. Alright, that's it for this video folks, on to the next one.